Hello and welcome. Um, in this video, we're going to look at an improved lighting system. It will support multiple lights and it will also have more advanced um, specular maps so that we can sample the reflectivity of a surface on a per pixel level. Some of this is going to be a live demonstration and some of it is already prepared ahead of time. So here's what I've got set up. It's mostly in the uh, shader. Go to the fragment shader and I've done a few things. Um, for one, I took the uh, all the material information and I abstracted that out into its own structure or struct. Um, this can be Okay, so this can be accessed in a more succinct way. Um, so at the moment we have two samplers here with two different textures. And we have declared down below um, that one of the uniforms we're taking in is of the material type and its name is very imaginatively material. Then if I go to the material object, oops. Uh, sorry, no, not there. Uh, so we'll go to the app. Okay, so for example, over here where we set the location of, um, well, well, yeah, set the index of the uh, diffuse texture to texture unit zero, texture index zero. Um, the way we access that location within the shader is material.diffuse, lowercase material, because we are talking about the uniform here, which is being passed in. Okay, so as well as that, instead of just one light, um, okay, so we take uh, all the light information, put it in a structure here, and then instead of just one light, um, we've defined up here, we're gonna run with a maximum of eight lights, and we are defining that we're taking in an array of lights. So um, we should have eight light objects created inside the shader uh, ready to go. And then to um, work with them, we just need to access the um, information. So uh, I have a variable here called uh, uh, light count. And when I create a light object, down here. I also pass in um, that variable to say, okay, so when I create my first light, it is, um, you know, light count equals zero. So this is light index zero. Um, and then we run down to the creation code and we store, so we take in the index number zero in this case, we store that. And then when we go to the update, we use that to say, okay, we're looking at lights and then we pass in the index. This is an F string, which is really good for, um, really useful for formatting and um, set that parameter. And yes, um, <laughs> for half of this, I'm using American spelling and half of this I'm using Australian spelling. Um, that's just, I don't know. I like to use American spelling sometimes. It's kind of international, kind of cool, but anyway. Right, uh, so, but then we've got an issue here, right? Because we've got a whole set of lights and we're only setting one light. So we've also got this function called reset lights. And what that does is it um, sets the color for all of the lights, all eight of the lights to zero. So if we have extra lights, it will simply, they'll have, they'll be all black. It won't do anything. There is an easier, well, there is a better way to do that, which we'll look at in a second. Okay, so, 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 um, on the main function of the shader, we, um, yeah, so we want to get the result of every single light. So we start off with nothing, and then we add in the ambient lighting level, and then we loop through from zero to seven, and we pass in um, each of those light objects, and we run a calculate function. Uh, what does the calculate function do? Well, it pretty much does the same thing that this main function did in the last video. Um, 
We pass in the position of the camera, the fragment's position in 3D space, the normal direction of the fragment, as well as the material that we're shading and the um, texture coordinate. So then um, the way this works is again, I've just copy pasted this from before. Note, I did change some of the names and that can be a little bit awkward when you basically have the same variable declared in a number of places. I'm pretty sure I didn't have to change the names, but I did anyway. Uh, okay, so again, we calculate all of our directions, which we will need to know. Um, and then we run a calculation to get the diffuse amount and the specular amount um, and return the result of applying that light. Uh, just a few things to note, I guess. Um, in this case, in this case, we are sampling from the texture and uh, passing that through. <laughs> and down here, we are doing the regular specular calculation, um, but we also need to multiply it by what's called a specular coordinate, uh, specular texture. So we'll, we'll look at that soon. Okay, so um, that's enough talk for now. Let's have a look at how this looks so far. So we have, you know, just a single light and it seems to work well. Uh, no specular lighting at this point. Yeah, also the, hmm. Ah, I'll just have to, I'll just have to update this in a second. No specular lighting at the moment because we haven't looked at the specular map yet, but let me just, let me just uh, jump into this shader. So down here we've added the ambient level but we also need to give that a texture. So we'll need to multiply it in with the texture. Oops, that's not good. What have we got here? Mm, yeah, because I changed the names, okay. Oh, still doesn't like it. Okay. Undefined variable fragment material. Um, what? Level 49. Did I not save that? Oh, new error errors. Okay. Right, undefined variable texture coordinate. So this is all the fun of renaming all of the variables. Okay, cool. So then the, yeah, that is working a lot better. Cool. Time for us to look at um, the texture stuff. So at the moment uh, we have this thing called crate and I'm calling it crate diffuse. Um, and when I create the object. I just pass in uh, the string graphics crate and then in the creation it sticks on that that file ending diffuse.jpg. So we're going to also make a specular texture and these actually aren't too bad to do. We'll just go uh, open with your editor of choice. I like GIMP. And what we want to do is we want to, first of all, make this black and white. So we'll go, there we go, there we go. Used to be, I used to remember this was a lot easier. Okay, so desaturate color to gray. Right, um, I, I guess that works. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is we want to get rid of this wood stuff. So we want, I don't know if it really works this way, but we're going to say that this uh, metal is very reflective and the wood is not. So we want a way to, Get rid of the wood.
Okay, so we've deleted uh, the wood regions. It's filled them, uh, filled them with white by default, but we want it to be, want it to be black, really. So we just, um, yeah, heaps of ways we could do this. I'm not a professional, but yep, yeah, we've made it black. So that bit is not going to reflect. And I think we can pretty much just save it as it is. Sorry, export. Yeah, we're going to call it CrateSpecular.jpg. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Don't overthink it. Okay. So close that. Discard changes. We are all good. That is what we want. Let me open this back up and let's... Um... Okay. So we're going to go self-specular texture, generate a texture, bind it. Um, those parameters look good. We want the file path plus specular.jpg. That is good. Then what we want to do is we want to send uh, that specular texture in as well. But we want that to be um, texture unit one. And by default, um, open. Actually, you know what? Let's experiment with this. Let's just load it in as the regular texture. Because I was trying to get normal maps to work last night with another project and it just wasn't working. And I found this is a good test. Like, load the map in and see if it will load. And that looks great. I mean, yep. Perfect. Okay, so we know that it works. Good. Now let's send it in as the other one, texture index one. So remember, when you have multiple textures, you can load them in. You just need to set them, allocate them to separate texture units, which is what we'll do here. Okay, so in this line here, I say the diffuse texture is texture unit zero. Now I run that again. And I'll say the um, specular texture is texture unit one. Fingers crossed this works. It may not. Ah, uh, no, it works. Okay. Okay. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, okay. I may have missed something. So we also need to set the strength of the light. So let's set this to a strength of... Ah, let's make this really extreme. We'll set it to a strength of 10. I'm going to accept our position. float. Okay. Okay, cool. So for the other two, um, they were three dimensional vectors, we had to go three FV. This is just a single float value that we're passing in. And let's see what happens. Ah, cool. Cool. Okay. So don't do this, right? Because it's a bit unrealistic. But, but, only the metal is reflecting. So we can define on a per pixel level um, the reflectiveness of the surface. Wow, that's cool. 
Okay. Okay, so we're almost done. Yeah, that's cool. But let's let's dial that strength down a little bit. I think I was working with the strength of two in the last video. That's fine. <laughs> so the other thing we need to do is we need to fix that um, lighting because setting all of the setting all of the um, colors to zero is a bit of a hack um, and it we're still doing heaps of calculations so instead of that let's define a boolean called enabled and then down here we'll say Okay, so we can skip a bunch of calculations. Um, now here's the thing, with uniforms, there's no way to send a Boolean. So instead of that, it's common to uh, send an integer. So send one integer. Uh, Okay, so we send one integer disabling um, value zero, so that disables all of the lights. Um, and then on the update, we, we enable this single light. So we're gonna set that to uh, one, I guess. Enable the light, looks good. Um, so if we run that, we should still see the same. And just for fun, we'll put a second light in the scene. Um, Who cares? I'm just randomizing this. So um, it has a different color, it has a different position. Um, and yeah, same strength, that's fine. Okay, great. And then we just go to the main loop. And everything we have to do with the light, we do with the second light as well. Cool. Okay, run that. And it fails. Awesome. That's cool. What do we have? Invalid operation. Is it possible? That's a funny error to make. Yeah, I tell you, I make errors, not, not that bad. That's cool. Okay, so now we've got uh, multiple lights. And uh, yeah, that's cool. Okay, that's fun. Cool. Um, so that's it for now. All the best. Have fun with it. And uh, yeah, see you next time. Bye.